Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's English. I'm Dave, and I will admit this might be a long video. There's a lot that I want to cover in this video, a lot of stuff that I just want to get, get in before the end of the year, because 2024 is going to be a new leaf that's going to be turned on this page. A lot of things are going to be changing, and I, I did want to make one video before the end of the year that kind of stuck to, unfortunately, what was the theme of uh, 2023. So if this is a little bit long, I'm sorry for that, but there is a lot that I want to cover in this video. Now, Marina McGilco said in a presentation a number of years ago that the English learning industry and the language learning industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. And she's right. That's true. It is a multi-billion dollar industry. And as that money has become more and more and more, the people with maybe not the best intentions have gone into it. You're not just seeing it in the quality of YouTube videos. You're also seeing it in the quality of teaching. More and more people that you see on italki and other places like that, or even in a classroom in certain countries, don't even have teaching qualifications. It's just simply they speak the, la the, the language natively and then they are all of a sudden a teacher of language, which is absolutely false. And we're starting to see this being compounded more and more and more, where a lot of people are trying to get your hard earned money, even though they might not have the best intentions. And in today's video, when we talk about Kevin and Lisa Lydell, otherwise known as English for Everyone with Kevin and Lisa, I want to talk about that integrity. And I want to talk about that because there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. Now, before we get into the Lisa video, my response and everything I want to talk about after that, I do want to address two things. So the eagled eyed amongst you might have noticed that I have removed two videos from my channel. I mean, I've just hidden them. They're still there, but I probably won't be putting them back up. And then I want to explain why I removed those videos. Now, the first one is the video about Ariana in which I say that I question that she is a native English speaker because of a number of things that she said when she was doing her videos. The mistakes in the way she pronounced certain things and everything just didn't seem to sound really natural. She sounded like she knew English well, like, like really, really well. But on her YouTube channel, she was claiming that she was a native English speaker. And I really, really doubted that because of these specific mistakes that she was making on her channel. So status update. She now no longer says that she is a native English speaker, but just now an English speaker teaching English on YouTube. And this was the issue that I had originally, not about her errors and all that, which are bad and should be critiqued, but it comes to the point where back to what I was talking about with integrity, if you have a large following, like 400,000 plus subscribers, and you're telling those people that you are a native English speaker, there is a trust they have in you that you are giving them the right information and you shouldn't be violating that trust. The fact that she went ahead and changed what she had originally on her channel was the goal of what I wanted to do. I wanted her to come clean and say that she was not a native English speaker and that she shouldn't be deceiving people like this. And for me, that's why I removed the video, because in this case, she righted a wrong. She made a correction. And for me to continue having a video up there in which she I say she made a mis, you know, made a mistake by claiming she was a native speaker and yet she's made that change. That would be bad on my part. So I knew I needed to remove the video, which I have no problem with because it's the right thing to do. I don't want to beat a dead horse. I want to make sure that this industry is clean. I want to make sure that this industry has integrity and claiming that you're something that you're not, that hurts the integrity. The fact that she switched back, well, I don't know what she originally had, but the fact that she switched to saying she is just an English speaker was more than enough for me to just pull my video. Again, it's about integrity. It's not about hits. It's not about views. 
Now, the second video I removed, which is the one that's causing most of the stir recently, is my one with Spill the Tea. Now, I removed that for two reasons. One, I'll admit that maybe I was a little bit wrong. I kind of made it look definitive as Spill the Tea is not used at all, where it maybe is used a little bit more than I thought it was. And that's my fault for not doing a lot of research. Now, where I am from, nobody uses spill the tea. Everyone uses spill the beans and spill the beans is still the overwhelming majority way to say that certain idiom. Okay. That's just the way it is. It's, it, it's just a fact. Okay. But I understand there are regional differences in which spill the tea might be used in more places and other places. So for example, if somebody says that somebody is lit, that might mean that somebody is cool or somebody is awesome. Say, hey, he's really lit. But where I'm from, if somebody says that somebody is lit, it means that they're extremely drunk. So if someone came to me and said, yeah, that guy's totally lit, I'd be like, well, how much vodka did he drink? Right. So there are these regional differences. I totally understand that. But even though I kind of stick by what I say, the spill the tea, as far as it being used way less than spill the beans, I could have done a little bit better research. And on top of that, there were a lot more errors that she made, but people are so fixated on spill the tea. They didn't realize that she was constantly teaching um, uh, conditional sentences incorrectly. So I felt that people weren't seeing the forest for the trees. And therefore I decided to remove that video because they weren't looking at the whole video. They were just looking at the spill the tea aspect of it. And I just felt that at that point, it was just more of a distraction. So I decided to remove that video. Now we get to the Kevin and Lisa Liddell, otherwise known as English for Everyone with Kevin and Lisa. And by the way, for those of you who think that I'm doxing them, no, their names are actually on their Facebook page that we're going to get to a little bit later on. Did I make mistakes? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what they were expecting me to say. I mean, I wasn't going to come up and change the English language. Yeah, I made mistakes. Does that make me human? Yeah. Did I look at them afterwards and say, holy crap, those are mistakes? Yeah. Would any native speaker, you know, bat an eye when it came to those mistakes if I was, if I was speaking to them? No. <laughs> and that's the difference, the whole nitpicking that they do. But yeah, there were mistakes. So what? So what? They were mistakes. Now, I want to take a video that Lisa did in retort to Hadar when Hadar actually gave a critique of their channel. So we're going to go through this video and I'm going to stop it a few times and we're going to look at a few things because I think it really shows a shift in Kevin and Lisa's approach. So let's go ahead and let me show you that video. The reason why we decided to make this video is because we received a lot of hateful comments, including name calling and inappropriate language inspired by this video. I'd like to address the false accusations that have been made. So first of all, Lisa, it's not accusation. It's accusation, accusation. It's not accusation. That is a mispronunciation. Native speakers would not say accusation. That is a mispronunciation. Now, if you and Kevin are going to critique every single little mispronunciation that somebody makes, like mirror compared to mirror, okay, well, you know, they should do the same to you because honestly, Lisa, you are a treasure trove of mispronunciation toys, okay? You, you just have everything that anyone can look at and just start making a whole entire YouTube channel themselves. So, I mean, I know you like throwing stones, but you know, if somebody wanted to actually critique your pronunciation, they would have a field day with it. Just want to throw that out there. Accusation, not accusation. All right, let's go ahead and continue with the video. Let's listen to the first one. Yeah, well, the thing is, many of the examples that were given in those videos were taken from her vlogs where she's casually speaking or while explaining something. It's not true. Every single example was taken from her teaching channel, Lingua Marina. It wasn't about her making mistakes while speaking in her daily life. It was about her teaching you incorrect English. Now, this is an important thing to know because as you notice, they said 
we got it from her English teaching channel. What they want to do in this situation is they want to take the Lingua Marina channel and conflate everything that is on that channel as being a lesson when it's purely not. There are times that she goes out on the street and just talks to people or talks to a friend or does something else. Those aren't lessons. They're on her Lingua Marina channel, but they're not lessons. They're not structured lessons. They're just having a normal conversation. Now, me, when it comes to me, my channel, I have a few lessons. I did lessons early on about grammar. Those are the only things that I have done in regards to lessons. Everything else that I have done on this channel is either commentary or opinion in which I talk, you know, off the top of my head. I mean, I might make some notes like here. I like I have the notes for this uh, video right now. And, you know, good luck reading those. Hell, I can't even read those. But I just have some notes. Look at those notes and just speak. Just do opinion. Just do commentary. Right. Lingua Marina does a lot of that herself. And it is absolutely true what Hadar said, that a lot of the videos, yes, they were from the Lingua Marina channel, but they weren't necessarily teaching videos. However, they, that's why they say we got it from her teaching channel. They want to conflate the two so they can justify that they are teaching mistakes, even though a lot of what they talk about was not the actual thing that Marina was actually teaching. OK, now there are things that Marina taught that were actually wrong and they talk about it. That's fair game. But if she is talking about something, let's say misses an article, she wasn't teaching articles. So if she was teaching articles and then made a mistake with an article, I understand that's totally fair game. All right, let's go ahead and listen to the rest of this video clip. There were absolutely no examples taken from her vlogs because we believe there is nothing wrong with making mistakes while speaking in your daily life. Really, Lisa? Really? Because the video you did about me, everything I did was just me speaking like I normally do in everyday life. Okay? It was commentary or opinion on other videos. It, you, you didn't take anything from my videos regarding grammar, which is the only thing that I have done a lesson on on this channel. I've never done a vocabulary lesson except for the word shit. I take that back. I did a vocabulary lesson on the word shit. OK, so I hope you liked that one if you saw that. But I've never done a pronunciation lesson. I've really never done a vocabulary lesson. All of my lessons have been about grammar. So if you wanted to make a correction about a lesson I did, then you should have talked about the grammar lessons that I did. OK, me speaking off the cuff, according to your own rules is something that you say is fine. So why are you critiquing people when you created, why, why do you create your own rules and then break your own rules? That is pretty, pretty thick of you. I mean, honestly. So, you know, that is what it is. Now, when it comes to the video they did about me, there's a few things I wanna mention. First, I haven't been able to go through all of the, at this point, 1,066 videos that they have done. That's pretty obsessive, but you know, out of all those videos, I haven't gone through them, but of all of the videos that I have looked at where they critique other people, the video in which I am featured is the only video. And it is still like this to this day where the comments are disabled. Now, I don't know what they're afraid of. I can't comment on their video. They've banned me from commenting on their videos. And a lot of the people on this channel who agree with me, they've banned them too. So, and, and, and if they want to, they can just ban whoever they want. Okay. Why did you turn off the comments of the video and only of my video? That's it. You didn't turn off the comments on any other videos. You've done more videos because you're obsessed with this stuff. You've done like since my video, you've done like five or six other videos, which, you know, I was actually enjoying Christmas with my family and and talking to friends and actually enjoying my holiday. I wasn't sitting in front of the computer looking for errors or stuff. You know, I have like a life. But anyway, you know. Why are the comments turned off? 
go ahead and turn those suckers back on, okay? Turn them on. What are you afraid of? Again, I can't comment, so just go for it. Now, the second thing is, and I'm not saying this to be arrogant or anything, but give me some credit. So you put me in your video. You say that I'm wrong. You put me on your thumbnail, but you don't mention who I am. You don't put my channel in the title, yet you put Hadar's in the title. With the 8 million hashtags you have below, again, a little bit obsessive, you don't put me in any of those hashtags, right? It's like, for some reason, you don't want people to find my channel. Is it that you're afraid if they find my channel that they would then find out more videos about you? Now, if you were truly doing stuff to educate people, wouldn't you then give them the link of where you got this information to show that maybe I'm a teacher or something like that? Wouldn't you give them a little bit more information so that the people that you're giving this information to can then make up their own mind? No, you don't want to do that. It seems like you want to have a very closed gated community where you are the only ones that hold the key. But, you know, if you're going to use my shit, just give me some credit. Okay. For Christ's sakes, I talk about how shitty you are. And I mentioned it's Kevin and Lisa for English for everyone. That's, that's crap. Okay. At least give me some credit. Holy cow. Now with that all being said, I decide to send Kevin and Lisa an email. Now I mentioned in a previous video that I did that I would love to debate them as to whether the dictionary is or isn't accurate or if there is a nuanced approach to the dictionary. So I went ahead and sent them an email and here is that email that I sent them. Now, after I sent it, I was amazed how quickly I got a response. They probably, I, I was like, oh, I already got a response. They probably just told me, you know, screw off or something like that or no, or yes, maybe, I don't know. I go on there and I see that it's been returned back to me because that mailbox no longer exists. That's interesting. Now, this email address that I contacted is the email address they have on their website. It's the email address they have on their YouTube page. It's the email address they have on their Facebook page. Basically, if anybody wants to contact them, nobody can contact them because that email that they have on everything is no longer a valid email. And the error that I got back when I got the email sent back was basically that this address does not exist anymore. That was the main thing. It was just this address does not exist anymore. So to me, this is quite perplexing. Now, I also looked at a review for English for Everyone from about a year ago, and somebody else made the same complaint that they couldn't contact them whatsoever. So me getting an email back saying that their email is no longer available is just basically par for the course, I guess, when it comes to contacting them over the last year, because it seems like other people have tried to contact them as well, and they haven't been able to get any contact. Now, for me, this is kind of baffling. I have my own website. I am an English teacher, a true English teacher. If my email isn't working, I panic. If I don't have a way for my students or potential students or whoever to contact me, if my email is somewhat down, I am panicking and trying to figure out how to get that email up as soon as possible. And I have two email addresses just as a backup if for some reason the other one doesn't work. And I also have email access. I have it somewhere here on my phone in everything. I make sure that I can check my emails. And if one of my students or a potential student contacts me, that I can actually contact them. And for any potential students, I have a form on my website that they can fill out and they can contact me. Now, if you've contacted me over the last few weeks, I've been really, really busy. I promise I will get back to those emails. I'm just kind of falling a little behind. I'm just going to let you know that. But if you're a teacher or claim to be a teacher, and you're running a business, it just seems really odd that you would have an email address that nobody could contact you at. That to me is just absolutely nuts. So with this being the case, I was like, you know what, let me look a little bit more 
into Kevin and Lisa's business because it something doesn't seem right here. It doesn't seem right that you would say that you're an English teacher, have a website, have, have a YouTube channel, have a Facebook page, and just have no way for any potential students or current students to contact you. That just seems a little bit off. So I want to talk about some of the things, and I didn't dig too deep. Let's just talk about, first of all, their website. That's the first thing that I actually want to talk about. So let's turn to that first. And everything that I'm talking about is just there on their website that you can observe it yourself. You can look at the information yourself. Hello, everyone. So this is actually Future Dave. And I just want to let you know that Kevin and Lisa have actually removed their website. Um, and it's not geographically located right now. I am using a VPN from France. I was using one from Slovakia earlier and their website is totally down. Now they probably knew that someone in the United States was looking at their website a lot, which yes, that was me. Uh, so I thought maybe they, they just, you know, blocked it for a certain geographical location, but it seems like even with the VPN, they've blocked it everywhere. So that's about suspect as all hell. Actually, um, shutting down your website. No, that's not suspicious at all. Okay, let me get back to the video. Now, the first thing that I found very odd was, and this is the reason why I say Lisa and Kevin Liddell, is that they don't have any profiles as to who they are on their actual business website. Now let's take my website, for example, Dave's English, or I just changed it back to the old, just say it English. I'll talk about that in future videos as to why I changed that. But anyway, if you go to meet your language coach, you will see my entire bio. You will see my name. You will see my education. You will see that I got a CELTA from the University of Cambridge. You can click on the CELTA and see the actual CELTA certificate. You can see that I taught at the Murmansk Language School and you can click on that link to see my profile actually at the Murmansk Language School's website, okay? I try to make myself as transparent as possible so that when you're looking for a teacher, you know that you are getting a teacher who is going to be the best possible teacher for you. I'm trying to sell myself to you to try to convince you that I can help you with your English. That's just common sense business. That's what LinkedIn is all about, is people putting their names up there and saying, here I am and here are all the significant and even insignificant things that I have done. Kevin and Lisa have nothing, like nothing, nothing differentiates them from Joe the plumber down the street as far as any English teaching history, English teaching criteria of any type, like education, work history, volunteer history, any type of history, experience, work experience, like nothing. They have nothing on their website about what they have done. And in addition to that, they say they have been teaching English since 2003. Again, no proof of that whatsoever. They just say that they've done it and provide no proof whatsoever that they have done that. Now me, again, I say that I've been teaching since 2017. And if you want to know about my history of teaching, I will link the Chris Americos podcast uh, down below because that's where I really got into it. But it just, it, it just blows my mind that you are running a supposed English language school or online course or whatever, and you have no way for people to contact you and you have nothing in regards to your credentials. It's just weird. And the third thing on there as well is they talk about the classes that they offer, but you can't register for any class. So you don't even know the credential of your teachers. You don't even know uh, like how to contact them if you wanted to actually take a class. So this is just some weird, weird thing that they're claiming to be teachers online, but it seems like their website is a total shell. It just doesn't scream, you know, we are teachers trying to help you with your English learning needs. No, it's like, yeah, we, we, we've taught since 2003, 
pay us money. Um, oh, by the way, there's no way you can contact us. Um, don't even try. I mean, it, it's just like, this is like the, I, I don't know what the hell this business model is, but it's pretty damn shitty. I'll tell you that. So yeah, overall, you can't contact them. You can't take lessons from them and they have absolutely nothing proving any of their English teaching history, criteria, credentials, education, work history, volunteer history, nothing. Just nothing. They want you to hand them over money because, but you can't hand them over money because you can't contact them to sign up for a lesson. I don't get it. <laughs> I, I just don't get it. And with this being the case, it seems like if you can't take lessons with them, that their pure income comes from YouTube. Because here's the thing, according to Social Blade, they make about, at the most, $27,700 per year, which would be below the poverty level in the state of Texas where they live. Now, they might live in California right now. I'm not really sure. And if that's the case, then that's significantly lower than the poverty level. So if, because they don't have sponsors and sponsors couldn't contact them because you can't contact their email because their email isn't working or it just doesn't exist anymore. So it's even more of this weird thing that they're focusing so much on YouTube and it doesn't seem like they're focusing on any other aspect of English teaching. However, they did try. And that's what I want to talk about next. All right, now I'm going to show you a book here that many of you might have seen before, and it is called English for Everyone. That's the name of the book. Yes, just like Kevin and Lisa's uh, company or, or YouTube page that they have. Now, this is done by DK Publishing and has no affiliation whatsoever with Kevin and Lisa. Now, this is a really, really good book. I actually prefer the English with Everyone series more than I actually prefer any of the Cambridge books that you can get. So I highly recommend looking at these books if you really want to improve your grammar or vocabulary. They have other books as well. I highly recommend these, but these books are called English for Everyone. However, it's not coincidental that they just happen to be called English for Everyone and these books are called English for Everyone as well. Now, this book I bought back in 2017, I would have to say when I just started getting into the English teaching business because I really needed to brush up on a lot of things because contrary to popular belief here in the United States, we do not learn grammar at all in a school. As a matter of fact, if you look at my high school uh, course book, uh, I'll pull it up for this year, Lake Mary High School in Orlando, Florida, or Lake Mary, Florida. The word grammar only appears in that five times. Three of those are for foreign languages. So in the United States, we just don't teach grammar. It's just read, do a book report, read, do a book report. That is how English works in the United States. But again, this book is called English for Everyone. Now, as I mentioned, I can't find any history of Lisa and, and Kevin having any type of business whatsoever. I looked at the state of California, looked at the state of Delaware, looked at the state of uh, Texas, looked at their names and stuff like that to try to see if they had any LLC or anything like that. I couldn't find any LLC, which might prove to be a problem at the end of this video. However, um, I did come across their Facebook page, which was the English for Everyone Facebook page. Now, they created this Facebook page back in March of 2018, which would have been the first thing that they would have had online because according to the Wayback Machine, their website was done possibly in 2019 and their first YouTube uploads were also in early 2019. So the first thing that they actually try to get students on is Facebook. Now, the first picture that they have on their whole entire channel is just this big E. OK, and back in the day, this is like the default picture you would always have for your first picture. Their next picture is this. Actually using English for Everybody books in their in, in their in their uh, Facebook page. 
And here's the thing. This wasn't just the first time. Time after time after time after time, they kept on putting English for everyone and they tried to create confusion, making people think that they, English for everyone, which by the way, their Facebook page is only called English for everyone. They tried to create confusion between this book and their, and their YouTube channel, their, their classes and everything like that. They kept on using this stuff. They kept on using these books to actually advertise their course as well, which by the way, I went ahead and looked at DK publishing's copyright, uh, rules and all that. And it's against their rules to use their products to then promote your product. That is actually against their rules. That's against their copyright laws and a number of other things that Kevin and Lisa did with the English for everyone books as well is a pure violation of the rules set out by DK publishing as well. DK publishing can take them to court as far as copyright infringement. but all of these situations where they have these books, there is nothing that differentiates that this book is different than their course. They never, never say in any of the stuff that they show online, like their, their YouTube page, their Facebook page, um, anything that they have, they never say these are the books we use. These are not in any way affiliated with our school. Pure and simple, they tried to do deception. They wanted people to think this English for everyone and our school English for everyone is the exact same thing. And this is actually breaking federal law. And let me go ahead and read the federal law in which this breaks. So according to us Code title 15, chapter 22, subchapter three statute 1125, we can see here that any person who on or in connection with any goods or services or any container of goods uses in commerce, any word term name symbol or device or any combination thereof, or any false designation of origin, false or misleading description of fact or false or misleading representation of fact, which we have a further um, clarification of it is likely to cause confusion or to cause mistake or to deceive as to the affiliation connection or association of such person with another person or as to the origin of sponsorship or the approval of his or her goods, services, or commercial activities by another person. Now, if they had named their company English for everyone, they might have been able to get away with this, even though that still would have been against DK Publishing's rules that they have for copyright and whatnot. They still would have had to have gotten permission from DK Publishing to use the books the way that they did. However, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to, and I know Kevin and Lisa, a rocket surgeon isn't a thing, get, quit being anal retentive. It doesn't take a rocket surgeon to figure out that they were trying to use this book by advertising it and talking about it time and time again to get people to go into their class to make people think that this book and their class was the exact same thing. Because why else would you just miraculously pick that name and not tell anybody there is a difference between your class and this book? This is a violation of DK's publishing rules. It's also a violation of U.S. federal law. And Kevin and Lisa, if you go and you delete those pictures that you have where you have these, these in there because you like deleting stuff, go ahead, do it. I've already taken screenshots of them and I've sent them to DK publishing and let them know about what you've been doing with their books and how you've broken the rules that they have for copyright. And I guess if they want to determine if they want to do any legal action against you, then fine. They're going to go ahead and determine whether they do that legal action or not, because you're in pure violation of the law by not differentiating yourself English for everyone with them. And another thing on top of it too, you can use the same name, but you kind of have to be able to be in a different industry. So I can say 
I have a company called McDonald's. But if McDonald's, my company McDonald's sells cameras, that's obviously different than the burger joint that I have down the street here. There's no confusion. In this situation, because they are teaching English and they're using English teaching books, particularly workbooks, and they're using them in their advertising, it is a pure deception and confusion campaign to get people to come to their courses thinking that it is endorsed by them. And again, Lisa and Kevin, I've already sent an email to DK Publishing. They got back to me and just said, we'll be back to you in 10 weeks because we're really busy. So it's out of my hands now. I already gave them your YouTube channel. I gave them the um, Facebook page and whatnot. I gave them the screenshots and um, I'm sure that they're going to if they want to press this any further, they can. Maybe they don't see you as a threat, but now that you have 300 and some thousand subscribers, people might think over at DK that maybe you're dragging them through the mud and their reputation. So yeah, you know what? At the end of the day, I made some mistakes, but at least I can look at myself in the mirror. I can look online. I can look at my website and my company and what I've done because I'm getting ready to do taxes, unfortunately. And I can say, I built that. I did this. This is my company. Dave's English, just say it English. These are my creations. And I am proud to say I didn't have anyone's help when building this company. I didn't try to deceive anyone to make somebody think I was different or that I had something special that wasn't true. I am honest to my word, and it's this stuff that frustrates the hell out of me. I am open. I am transparent. I want my students to know who I am, what I have, what I can offer them. I don't hide behind a website that you can't even contact the people and you have no credentials. And on top of that, try to use other people's names to try to lend legitimacy to yourself. Now, if DK Publishing wants to do anything towards you, fine, they will, but it's out of my hands now. And this is the last video like this I want to do. I just, I got into, I got into doing these videos mostly because I was tired of, of just people taking other people in. I mean, like, when I came across English for Everyone's YouTube channel the first time, I was taken in. I thought it might have been the, the same people who did this. And a lot of my students thought that English for Everyone, their YouTube channel, was the exact same thing as this. And the fact that they have that information in these particular books, well, not this exact one, but the workbooks on their Facebook page multiple times without indicating, using it as a sales prop, not indicating that there's a differentiation between them and this. Nothing whatsoever. You know, again, I take pride in the fact that I actually built what I built. And like with Ariana, just coming clean and just saying, hey, I'm an English speaker teaching. I just want this industry to be clean. I just want the people who are out there teaching you and taking your time and your money to be, I want to make sure that they're giving you what the best is. Yes, a teacher can make a mistake. A teacher needs to look at stuff. Everyone makes mistakes. And for the last few minutes of this, and you don't have to listen to this part or not, but I wanted to mention a story that I had, a situation I had when I went to the University of Utah, because that's where I studied my first two years in university. So I went to a class one day, my first day of class, and it was with Professor Dan Jones, who was a who was a professor there for 40 years in political science and also the top pollster in the state of Utah. As a matter of fact, his company is still in existence today, even though he passed away a number of years ago. In our first class, he said something that was incorrect. Now, I just happened to know it was incorrect because he was talking about Florida politics. And even though he's from Utah, I worked in Florida politics. I had been working in Florida politics at that time for about 12 years. So I already knew that what he was saying was incorrect. And I told him he was incorrect. 
And he said, no, I think I'm correct. And I said, oh, I'm pretty sure I'm correct. And so on. And then the class ended. After the class ended, I went to the library and I got all the information and all the statistics to prove my point. So I had a, a, a list, you know, a bunch of papers this big to, to prove my point as to why my position was correct. And I wasn't trying to say that I'm correct to be correct. It was more, I wanted to say that I'm correct so that people have the right information. I went to his office. I dropped off these papers and I said, said to the secretary, this is for Dr. Jones. He can just look at it when, whenever he wants. The next class comes. Now, I don't know if he saw the papers or anything when he walks in. And I thought, well, if, if he did see the papers, then maybe he'll come up to me and say, Dave, I saw him. Good job or whatever. At the beginning of the class, he gets up to the front of the class. And he said, everybody, Mr. Trotter. And here was, and, and this was the thing about him. He would say, Mr. So-and-so for his students. We would call him Dr. Jones. He would call us by our last names and, and say, Mr. Like a, a real respectful, you know, respectful man, really. He said, Mr. Trotter mentioned something the other day in class and he was right and I was wrong. And I want you all to know that. Dr. Jones did not need to do that. He could have just come to me and said, Dave, you were right. And he, you know, he could have, but he swallowed his pride. He had honor. He had dignity. And he said in front of the whole entire class, Dave was right when it came to this. And again, I'm not trying to boast. It's, it, it's not about me in this situation. Actually, the story isn't really about me. It's about the integrity of a man who, when a, a professor of 40 years who knows the subject that I'm in his class for, saying that he's wrong, it's okay for teachers to be wrong. But the integrity that he had, the honor that he had, that's what's missing. And it's okay if a teacher's wrong. It's okay if a teacher makes a mistake. It's okay if a person makes a mistake. Okay. What isn't okay is deception. What isn't okay is lying. What isn't okay is confusion, making people think that you're something that you're not. This is wrong. And I just want to bring some dignity. And, that, and that's the reason why I went on this crusade for the last, you know, few months. I just want to bring dignity to an industry that I think is losing dignity right now. And I look at Dr. Jones, I'm like, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to stand up in front of the whole entire class and say he was wrong. That's why I came on here today and said, yep, I made those mistakes. It's important to have dignity out there. Now, I know there are going to be the Kevin and Lisa kamikazes that no matter what they say, they're going to go down you know, go down with the ship. I can't do anything about that. I, you're not my worry. I don't care about you. But to the others out there, I hope that you understand for a lot of this, it's more about the integrity. It's not about the errors. It's not about the mistakes. It's not about that. It's about making sure that your students, which by the way, my guess is out of all of the YouTubers out there, the YouTubers who do English, I'm probably the only one that gets students on a daily basis. I mean, except for days I have off, of course, that I actually teach students. You know, my guess is Marina and Lucy and, and, and all these other people don't actually teach English to actual students. I mean, some might, like Bob the Canadian might actually, but most of them don't. So I see the impact and the effect that this bad information has on the students. And I want to stop that. That's basically it. I want to stop that. All right. So that's the last video of the year. Have a wonderful day. The next I'm going on vacation. I'm actually taking a train from Chicago to Seattle, taking the empire builder train. I'm going on vacation. I get back. I'm doing another video. I will see you then. Bye-bye.